I just part two of the uh, turbo install on the second gen Camaro. What I'm gonna do right now is wrap these headers with this uh, uh, exhaust wrap. Just some cheap stuff from uh, eBay, you know. So I'm gonna put that on there just to kind of keep the heat away from the spark plug wires. So I'm gonna do that real quick and uh, I'm not gonna film it. If you wanna know how to wrap headers, I have another video of me wrapping headers when I turbo my, uh, my Integra. So you can check that out, but for now, I'm just hurry up and do it and skip through it. And then we go put these bad boys on the car and start installing everything and putting the turbo on. So let's get it cracking. All right, sorry for the lighting. Um, it's actually dark. Got home from work and uh, between work and family time, try to fit it in when I can. But uh, I wrapped the header. I didn't do the whole header. I know some of y'all probably like, what the heck? You done wrapped this header, man. You just, you just, you just, you just. But the thing is, uh, I just wanted to wrap the part where the spark plug wires go be. Because I'm just trying to keep the heat off the spark plug wires. The heat from, you know, the rest of the header and uh, affecting the car, I'm not really worried about. I just want to keep the heat off the spark plug wires. And this wrap is horrible ebay wrap paid i'm gonna pay like 20 bucks for it it's horrible as you can see the tips they come apart it, it started uh you can see like right here it start like i don't know what you call that man but it, it pretty much falls apart in your hand so i went ahead and did it and the tips i had to burn it with a torch so it'll stop unraveling yeah it unravels like this stuff literally unravels in your hand so um I did where the spark plugs go and spark plug wires go and I'm gonna leave it at that. So let's get down to business. We're gonna put this header back on as you can see. Um I took out the uh uh the spark plugs and spark plug wires and all that. So all we do is line them up and uh what I'm gonna do, you know, clean the um clean around here where the gasket go. So get that old access gasket off. We're gonna get the new gasket, put it on there. And what I like to do, um, let me show y'all real quick. We go put a little bit of, where's that? There we go. We go put a little bit of this ultra copper on there. I usually put these on my uh, gaskets. And I even put a little bit around the uh, the threads, the, uh, the screw threads. So, let's see. All right, you can either put it on the back side of the uh, the exhaust manifold or you could just put it on the back of the gasket and sit the gasket on the exhaust manifold and put a screw through it just to kind of hold it. And then you put it on. So uh, let's do that. I'm going to put some, uh, like I said, uh, the Ultra Copper Gasket Maker on there. And we're going to bolt this thing up. This is the driver's side I'm about to do. I just want to point one thing out before I put this on. Look at these gaskets. You see that? Check that out. Now, you got circle ports here. You got square ports there. Why do they have two different, uh, how can I say, style of gaskets with this kit? That's beyond me. But hey, that's China for you. So I'm going to put this thing together and uh, we go see what it do. If these gaskets don't work, then... Um, I buy some more. This is off manifold. You know, it got it's, it has the circle ports on it. So obviously, I'm gonna put the circle one with it. This one is square, so I'm assuming the other one is square. When I get there, I'll show y'all and we find out. But uh, yeah, this one goes here. So I'm gonna put it there. I just wanted to show y'all the craziness that you can get with some of these Chinese kits. So well, uh, we we go stick with it and we go see how it go. I just wanted to show you. This exhaust manifold does have square ports instead of the round ones that went on the driver's side. Um, the driver's side is on there, but I wrapped this one a little too uh, thick and the bolt won't go in. So as you can see, I pretty much wasted my time putting a wrap on this side because I refuse to take this thing back off for one bolt. So I'm end up removing the middle part and I have uh, spark plug wire sleeves so I'll probably just use those for uh, these two uh, ports right here, spark plug wire. 
So I still gotta get that last bolt on this side. Like I say, the, you can see the hole right there, but the wrap was too tight by the hole and the, the, the bolt wouldn't go in. So I'll figure that out later. For now, let's get the other side on there. And now uh, that side is on there. Just got one bolt I need to get in. I don't feel like wasting time. So this side is square, the other side is round. I don't know what's the deal with that. But uh, let's move on. Even this gasket, as you can see, I put the uh, ultra copper on there. It's square too, so let's get it on there. Hopefully it don't cause no problems. All right, got that passenger side on there. Everything went just the way I like, smooth. Got all the bolts in, didn't have to fight with none of them like that uh, driver's side. So, got this wrapped up. Man, this camera make this wrap look real good, but I tell you, man, it's horrible. It's wrapped up real good, but the quality of the wrap is horrible. It's shiny on camera, it look real nice, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, So, what's next? Throw that turbo on there. Throw that waste gay on, on there. And then... uh. I gotta modify that uh that cross pipe under the bottom. Um, I still gotta run the oil line. I got an oil pressure gauge. Uh, so that, yeah, it's going right there. That bronze thing. So that's why I plan on getting my oil for the turbo. I'm gonna pull that out, get a four way, put it in. Hopefully it's the same thread, or I gotta find out the thread that'll work for this and uh, get my oil from here. So when I get to that. You know, I'll show you how to do it. And um, I got the boat in on this side. See right there, got that boat in there. What I had to do, I pretty much, I cut the wrap and pulled it back. And then I got that boat in and the wrap, uh, it had unraveled. So what I did, I just raveled it back around. And uh, as you can see, I put another tie right here on the outside. So it looked all right. Like I say, it looked good on camera, but in person it's not all that um then i went over it with a torch because like i say this stuff be one to unravel so all the ends right here you can see where it's dark i hit it with a torch to keep it from unraveling up here i hit it with a torch to keep it right but um i finally got some work done in this thing so uh enough talking let's get that what, what we all come to see but uh, for, uh, uh uh just wanna go over the fitment for this exhaust manifold, I couldn't be more happier. It fit good. It clears the uh, control arms. The spark plug goes in. The bolt goes in. It's not leaning up against nothing. I seen a, a turbo kit to where this uh, uh uh where the turbo sit right here. It was actually closer to the valve cover to the point to where like if you want to do any work. In the valve covers, just in the rockers or whatever, you would have to take the turbo back off. But as you can see, um, the way it's sitting now, I got plenty of clearance. But uh, when I put that turbo in there, it might hang over a little bit. But uh, we'll, we'll see. I don't want to speak too soon. But I might have enough clearance to actually do work under the valve cover without taking out the uh, turbo. But... I forgot that turbo is pretty big, so it might hang over a little bit to where I do need to take out the turbo. But uh, it's only four bolts, and then you know you got the oil lines and stuff. But let me shut up before I speak too soon. I did that over there on that block off plate. I don't want to do it again. So uh, we'll find out once I put it on. That uh, GT45 hang over a little bit. If you get like a GT30 or maybe a 35, you probably have enough clearance. But uh, we'll see. Let's put this turbo on. All right, we go install the, the wedge gate first. I could put the turbo, but I don't want it to block what I gotta do down here with the wedge gate. So the wedge gate, this is my first time using uh, the V-band. I usually have the ones that you just both on, but um, got a V-band. Uh, this is the little seal. I forgot what they call it, but uh, you just put that in the center. And then you sit it on top of here. But before you can put the clamp on, see how that go down? This spring is only uh, five pounds. So, you know, you can push it with one hand and do it. But if you had a 14, 15, 20, 30 pound, 
you really have to push down on it because once you um, push down, you got to put this clamp around it and that keeps it from coming off. So luckily, I'm starting off with five pounds. I can push it myself. So um, let's see if I can get this dang on thing on there. So make sure you had a, I forgot what they call that thing, man. I'm sorry, y'all, but you can Google it or something, but I'm going to call it a seal. Just make sure the seal is on there. Then uh, the V-band clamp, it goes around it. So you got to push down. Let's see if I can get this thing around. Okay, there we go. There we go. I got it on there. So once it's on there like so, you get your boat. This one right here. Slide it through. You're going to have a, uh, well, at least with mine, you're going to have a, a little washer. Then it's another nut on the back. So put those on there. Oh, I feel like I'm about to drop it. I'm good at dropping stuff. I can't stand dropping tools and screws. Then you gotta crawl up under the car, find out where they went. And, oh man, I can't stand it, but I do it all the time. All right, so that's not tight, tight. You gotta put it, you know, you gotta use your tool to get it tight, tight. But I got the waste gate on here. This line right here from the nitrous, I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with it. I need to try to. I probably tie it down somewhere, but uh, this was for the, the nitrous unit. But that's how you put the V band on. Oh, it's called a fire ring, if I ain't mistaken. Fire ring, something like that. You put that on there, and um, like I say, depending on what spring you have in here, the tension of it, you will have to push down on it. You might need some help if you got a high tension spring in there, and then put this clamp around it. Make sure that it's, you know, that it's on there. And then once you get it uh, seated, you can start tightening the, the boat. I gotta find it. Well, you know what? I think I already have it. Yeah, I need to get a, a wrench to hold it. And then uh, the Allen screw to tighten it real tight. So uh, this is pretty much on there. Let me tighten that up. And then we're gonna install the turbo. All right, so this is the turbo I'm gonna be putting on. It's a GT45, pretty heavy. I don't wanna hold it with one hand and uh, be holding the phone at the same time because I'm bound to drop one of them. So we're gonna set that Mamma Jamma right here. This is a T4, um, <clears throat> uh, T4 housing. Um, what you call that, man? Do you either have a T3 or T4? This is a T4, but I forgot what you call that plate right there, but we just go call it a housing for now. And uh, same thing, get the gasket. What I usually do is take the gasket, put some of that ultra copper on there. Um, I had it out. Where did that bad boy go? Oh yeah, there it go. Yeah, put some of this uh, <clears throat> ultra copper. I'll put it on both sides of the gasket. And I uh, set the gasket on there, put the, th the four screws through and bolt it down. I'm using a three eighths, uh, one and a half inch, and a thread is 16. So I'm using three eighths, um, uh, one and a half inch bolts. I'm not saying that's what you have to use, but uh, that's what I'm using right now. So let me get the uh, copper on here and bolt that bad boy down. Both this bad boy on there. So we're closer to being finished. Still got a couple things to do. Um, we got the wastegate on there. Got this turbo on there. What I did was I put those three eighths, um, one and a half inch bolts in on this side. All the other ones, I, well, two of them I went from the bottom and two I went from the top. These two I dropped in from the top put the nut at the bottom I put a little silicone on the as you can see right here on the boat to kind of mm, you know just kind of lock it in there a little bit because the vibration sometimes these boats will vibrate out so uh, we see how it do but uh from the back I put the boat in from the bottom and the nut from the top because the clearance from 
the exhaust housing in the turbo, it wasn't enough room to drop a bolt through there. So I just put the bolt from the bottom, put the nut on the top. Same thing from this side, but I don't know if you can see that. Uh, yeah, right there. It actually had a little cutout to drop a bolt through, but to use a inch and a half bolt, which is what you need, because I had a one inch bolt, it didn't go out. It didn't fall through far enough to put a nut on the other end, so you need an inch and a half. So uh, that's not going to work, trying to drop it through the top. So I went from the bottom and, uh, you know, put the nut from the top, use silicone on it again. And that's it. It's got the gasket on there, and it's all bolted down. Now it's bolted down to stay. And I need to clock this, which is it's already loose. You can see it's, it's turning. So the next step is to put the um, the oil feed fitting on the top, and then the oil drain fitting from the bottom. And I still have to drill a hole in the oil pan to, uh, for the oil return to go back into the oil pan. And I think that's going to be a monster. Because if you look under here, I don't know if you can see. Uh, it's not a lot of clearance under here. Well, it don't look so bad, you know, just looking at it. But remember, I got to get a, 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 a drill under there with a drill bit and all that to drill a hole in the oil pan. And it's not a lot of room under there to be trying to stick a whole drill gun in a drill bit. So we'll, we'll see how that worked out. If I can't put it in the front, maybe I can... Try to get it in the back part back here. Just put it up high, so when I put oil in the car, it don't uh, submerge that uh, return line. So uh, we see how it go, and uh, we will take it from there. When I do that, I show you how I do it, and we'll see how it, how it work out. We won't know a hundred percent how all this work out until we get the car fired up and go for a drive. Then you will see. Oh, I got an oil leak here. I got an air leak here. I got a, you know. Uh, vacuum leak whatever the case may be you won't know until the car is fired up and you take it for that test drive so so far we good got that turbo in there this once again this is a ebay gt45 um i had the paperwork to it oh here it is. it's made by uh what's that max speed max speeding rods so uh the x is supposed to be for the max and the s for speeding so uh max speed and rise and that ebay company they got real good uh uh reviews so i figured to go with them i'll try them plus their price was right up my ballpark or how can i say right up my alley or whatever say but um it's good let me show you how to you look in there got the uh turbine for the inlet um yeah i don't know man i'm a little, a little worried usually when it's balanced you'll see that oh i'm sorry when it's balanced you'll see that nut in the front is shaved for like weight this one oh yeah there it is it's at the top you see that little nick right where my finger at get my finger in there all right here we go it's a nick right at the top, right there, where my finger is. Usually when you see those, it's because they balanced it. And to balance it, you take some weight off. So it looked like they nicked it right at the top for the balance. My old turbo, it was on the boat. So uh, you can see it right there where it's nicked at. Right there where that shiny part is. But yeah, it looked like it, it has been balanced, which is good. You can see it even easier on the back. You see that big chunk of metal missing from this corner right here that's because they balanced it so that's a good thing it looked like it's been balanced all right so yeah gt45 i think it's a little overkill for my engine i probably should have went with a 35 a little smaller but hey it is what it is when i was looking for the 35s they cost more than this big old 45 so i went with the 45 and as long as i keep the boost in order i should be all right so uh yeah i'm excited we one step closer to getting this thing fired up so i gotta do the the oil inlet oil return i got some more spark plug wires uh this is a a, a a regular carburetor i got a blow through carburetor so i need to change the carburetor um 
I need to get an air fuel ratio gauge and a boost gauge. And I'm going to wire those in. So uh, we almost there, y'all. Almost. Oh, yeah. Drill the oil pan for the uh, tap. So we almost there. And uh, I'll see y'all on the next video when I do the uh, oil tap. So catch y'all next time. All right, we back. I'm starting the process of tapping the oil pan. Just for a heads up, I already started a little bit. So I can see what will work, what won't. Been out here for an hour now, as far as I got. It's not a lot of room up under here. It might look like a lot with the uh, camera, but a drill gun, uh, impact, unless you got a mini one, you're not gonna get in between the small space. So what I did, you know, you're supposed to have a, uh, what you call that, a, uh, a punch to kind of put a little notch in it. So when you try to drill it, um, it don't dance around on you. I didn't have one. So that little hole came from a, a self-tapping screw. I was able to get a self-tapper in there. And uh, the hole is a little lower than I wanted to because, you know, from the angle, it was still a little off. But uh, I think that'll work. If need be, instead of putting five quarks, I just put four. And uh, it should be all right. But um, that's the hole from a self-tapping screw. And I'm going to show you what I had to do to get that thing to drill. Um, this is the drill that came with the kit I bought. As you can see, it's long. And when you put it in this uh, drill gun, it only go in so far. So this thing hang out pretty much how it is now. That's too much. I couldn't get it in there. So what I did was I uh, modified it. I found a socket. It got to be a 12 point that fit on the back of this uh, drill uh, drill bit. And then I, you know, with the socket bent on the back, I was able to put an extension. This is a, a one fourth um, extension, the small one. And this extension is the one I swivel. I didn't have just a straight one. Um, these are straight ones, you know, they don't have that little swivel to it. Uh, I think I'm using my other one that has a swivel. I can't uh, show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's right here. This one has a swivel too. You don't want to use those because they, there we go. I found one. You don't want to use the ones with the tip like this. It's made for it to kind of swivel a little bit. You don't want that because you're trying to drill. It's going to dance around on you even worse. So I didn't have a choice of what I did. I taped it and uh, it stopped it a little bit, but not completely. Now I have grease on the back. So while you're drilling through the oil pan, it helped minimize all the flakes that's falling off into the oil. It'll catch a lot of it. So you want to grease the heck out of that drill bit. Um, I didn't have the grease that I wanted. I think I left it at my parents' house when I moved. But I had a grease gun. And all I did was open it up and, uh, you know, stab the, uh, the, the drill bit into it and pulled it out. And, you know, got grease on it. So this is the size I need. But you don't want to go at it this big right away because it's hard to drill through, especially the angle that I'm doing it with. Um, so uh, you start, well, like I said, I started with the, um, the self-tapping screw. And then I'm going to start hitting it with this drill bit to get the hole a little bigger. Then I'm going to go at it with the correct side. So um, let me hit it with this one and see how it go. All right, as you can see. I got the hole in there. Um, that look like a boat from, like a rod, yeah. So when you drill these holes, you gotta be careful not to go in too deep and start hitting the crank or put a notch in the rod or something like that. So I got the hole in there. My little uh, shindig that I put together didn't work because what I thought the drill bit fit in this socket, it went in tight with my hand but as the drill bit was going in it was starting to get more friction it actually started to spin inside the socket but it made a big enough hose where i can use the uh the drill bit that i actually needed which is this one right here and um to go in straight i actually needed this longer to kind of go through this opening right here into the oil pan but I don't have a, a drill bit extender. So what I did, I just went in with the gun, but it was in the angle. I do not recommend drilling a hole in the angle. 
because uh, you need that drill, that hole to be straight, especially if you go tap it. But uh, I got lucky. It took me a minute to get it situated, but uh, I got it and the hole is there. And then that hole, the metal of this oil pan is thin. It's not a lot of uh, uh, material you have to drill through. So I was thinking like, how you gonna thread something that thin, but I put the tap on it and um, everything seemed to work. This kit came with the, uh, that's the tap. And then let me take the drill bit off. This is the drill bit, still got grease on it for me drilling it, but uh, this kit came together and you can pause the video. This is what I used. Um, it's a, what's that? The half inch MPT and a 2332 um, drill. So it came with the, the tap and the drill. And this is the, the number. I got it off eBay. So if you want to get the same one, here's the number. You can pause the video and uh, search it or look it up on eBay. But that's what I used. It came in this little pouch and everything. So um, I got it worked out. This is the fitting I'm going to use. I wrapped it with Teflon and I put silicone around the Teflon. I'm not for sure if that's a good idea or not, but I'm going to put it in there, let it sit. Um, this car ain't going to be ran for a while, so all that's going to dry up and hopefully I don't have no oil leak. So let's put this in there, get it threaded in there and uh, move on to the next thing. All right, that's the finishing touch. Got that, uh, I think that's a 45 degree uh, fitting on there. The fitting is a uh, uh, half inch MPT to a 5 8 uh, I think they call it like a, a barb hose or something like that. But you can get these out of Lowe's, Ace Hardware, Home Depot. So I got this one with a 45, so it kind of point up to where the uh, turbo is. So that hose can just go. Cause you want that oil, it, it's gravity fed. So you want it to go straight down. You don't want it to have no kind of turns or bends in it that'll slow the oil from uh, draining into the pan. So I'm gonna leave it right there. Hopefully the back part, as you can see, it's not threaded all the way in. You don't wanna go all the way in. You just want to get it snug. And hopefully that back part ain't too close to that crank cause that crank could go spin and you don't want it to hit it. So um, if I remember before I start the car, I crank the engine a couple of times to make sure I don't hear no 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 knocking or anything like that. And uh take it from there. Um so we got the the oil pan tap. This is the first time I ever did it. My Integra I ended up buying the oil pan. It was already done by uh Moroso. So uh that was easy. I just had to get a fitting to go to it. But uh this car, I'm pretty sure you can find the oil pan that uh has it also. But it's a lot harder to get the oil pan off a of second gen Camaro than it is a Acura Integra. They don't have this crossbar going underneath. So you could just drop the pan with no problem. This car is not like that. So I didn't want to deal with the hassle. So I did it myself. Drilled and tapped it. So far it's working good. But like I say, you won't know until the car is running. Go for that test drive and see if you're leaking any oil all over the place. So, um, so far it's looking good looking good so uh, let's move on to the next thing and that's uh running the uh the actual putting the fitting on the turbo for the oil drain and the fitting on the turbo for the oil feed and then i gotta see if the fitting that i have for the oil feed actually the same thread to this block so uh let's check that out